Hey there team, Chemistry Coach coming at you for a quick video. I was debating whether to do this as a video on its own because we just kind of teach rounding rules as we do calculations. It just kind of, you just kind of learn it as you go, but eh, it won't take us long. So let's make an official rounding rules video for our journey in math and chemistry. Because when are you going to round? Every time you have an answer, oh, right? Because chemists always, always, always have to track uncertainty. So we're going to take whatever our math operation is, get an intermediate or non-rounded value. You need that, okay? And I like you personally. Um, so when you use, and, and we, I like to use that vertical dash line to separate the significant from the non-significant digits. I've seen different ways of doing that. I just like that because, yep, these are to the left, the significant ones, the non-significant ones to the right. And carry at least two. So if this is my dashed line. My significant digits are here. My non-significant digits are here. Give me two or more. You really don't need more than two. They're not significant anyway. So just kind of a waste of your time writing them all down. Don't write, you know, 15 digits on your calculator or something. If you're on a test, that just slows you down. You're writing numbers that you don't need and you're putting them in a calculator calculator and wasting your time. Not a lot of one problem, but if there's 20, 25 problems, you're going to waste a couple minutes on there and you may not get to the last problem. So don't do things that aren't necessary. See what I'm saying? So I personally carry two past the vertical dash line. If you want to go more, that's totally up to you. To you. But give me at least two. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that non-rounded or intermediate value. And you can see that vertical dash line. We're going to look at that last significant digit and go, hmm, do we round that up or do we leave it alone? Well, it's based on the non-significant digits. So here's our last significant digit right next to the dashed line here. And then to the right of that dashed line, you look at those two digits or more and go, hmm, are those numbers going to force me to round this last significant digit up or leave it unrounded? There are three scenarios, at least in my general chemistry class. We're going to take it with the statistics rules. In introductory chemistry, I only give you two scenarios. But in uh, general chemistry, I'm going to give you three different scenarios. I'm just going to put them up on the board, show you what we do when they come into play, and you'll be good to go. Um, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the first two. The third one might be a little weird for you, but you'll get used to it. Scenario number one, my friends, and this is true whether you're doing the two scenarios or three scenarios, uh, introductory chemistry, whatever. If the non-significant digits to the right of the dashed line are greater than five, you're going to round the last significant digit up. So if you take a look at it, say we have 312.64, good to three significant figures, or good to the ones place, depending how you look at it. So we have the dashed line there. So the three, the one, and the two are significant. The six and the four are not significant. Well, can you see that the 0.64, that's greater than five. So it's closer to 313 than it is to 312, right? 312.5 would be halfway between 313 and 312. So we're closer to the 313. So that's going to round up. Right, the non-significant digits are greater than five, so that twelve, that two runs up to a three, so we go to three hundred and thirteen grams. So this would be your intermediate non-rounded value, and then your rounded, and you always box your rounded value. Don't box the non-rounded one; box the rounded one. That's an ugly three. Same thing here: four point zero eight five two liters, good to three significant figures or two decimal places in this scenario, depending if you got that answer by adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. So the question is, do we leave the 8 as an 8 or round that 8 up to a 9? It's our last significant digit. Well, let's take a look at the non-significant digits. That's a 5, 2, which is bigger than 5. That's greater than 5. So it's barely, right? Halfway would be 4 point, halfway between 4.08 and 4.09 would be 4.085. That would be exactly halfway between 4.08 and 4.09. But we're not exactly halfway. We're at 4.085. Which is a teeny bit closer to 4.09 than it is to 4.08. So that's going to round up. That 8 rounds up to a 9, gang, because that little 2. That's why I like you to take at least two non significant digits, right? So this is 4.09 liters. Let's do scenario number 2.
Scenario number two, my friends. What if the non-significant digits to the right of the vertical dashed line are less than five? This is true whether you're using the two or three scenarios, whether you're in high school, introductory chemistry, more advanced chemistry, doesn't matter. This is always going to be true. If, it's, if these are less than five, then it's closer to the smaller number than the bigger number. In that case, you do not round up that last significant digit. You just leave it alone. Let's take a look at these scenarios. 0 0.002015, good to two significant figures or four decimal places, depending on how you got there. So we pop the vertical dashed line. So that last zero right there, that's your last significant digit. Do we leave it as a zero or do we round it up to a one? Well, let's take a look. The non-significant digits are one five. That's less than five, right? So it's closer to 0 0.0020 than it is to 0 0.0021. It's way closer to 0 0.0020. So we do not round that up. So we leave it as 0 0.0020 kilometer. That does not round that up. Right? It's closer to the lower digit. It's closer to the zero than it is to the one. Let's take a look at 3,245 feet. Good to two significant digits or to the hundreds place. Do we leave that 2 as a 2, or do we round it up to a 3? So is it closer to 3,200, or is it closer to 3,300? So here's 3,200, here's 3,300. Are we closer to 3,200 or closer to 3,300? Well, it's 3,245. 3,250 would be exactly halfway, but that's not exactly halfway. It's less than halfway. So it's closer to 3,200 than it is to 3,300. So that's less than, the non-significant digits are less than five, i.e. it's not quite halfway. So we do not round that two up, so it stays as 3,200 feet, right? If that was a five five, then we'd round it up. Then it'd be closer to 3,300. You see that? Not a big deal. Um, now, in introductory chemistry, you probably learned that if it's less than five, do not round it up. If it's five or greater, round up. That's probably what you learned. But in general, at least my general chemistry class, we're going to add a third option. What if it's exactly five, right? What if this was 3250? It's exactly halfway between 3200 and 3300. Well, I'm not closer to that one. I'm not closer to that one. I'm exactly in between. How do you know which way to go? In, in introductory chemistry, we usually just say round it up, but that, statistically, that's not really true. So let me show you what we do using statistics. It won't happen very often. Now, how, how often are you going to get like a 5-0 after the dash line? Very, very rare, ah, except every test you'll ever be on. <laughs> but in lab, probably not going to happen. Let's do scenario number three, if it's exactly halfway between those values. You ready for the weird one, scenario number three? What if the non-significant digits to the right of the vertical dashed line is exactly five, five zero, right? So a five with all zeros after it, however many non-significant uh, digits you carry. Well, 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 that's a harder way to think about it, right? So it's exactly halfway between the values. So you don't know whether to round up or not. Which way do you, which way do you go? So here's what statistics says. Um, it says that if that's the case and your non-significant digits are all exactly five, zero, right? The last significant digit must be even, right? So if the last significant digit is odd, round it to an even number. If it's an even, leave it alone and don't round it. Yeah, easier done than said. All right, that doesn't follow, <laughs> right? Let's take a look at it. Let's say we have 1.450 meters good to two significant digits or to the tenth place. So we put the vertical dash line between the four and the five. Notice the non-significant digits is five zero. So it's exactly halfway between 1.4 and 1.5, right? It's exactly halfway. So I don't know whether to go up to the 1.5 or down to the 1.4. What do you do? Well, the four is the last significant digit. It's already even, right? This is even right there. So we leave it alone. So we do not round that up to a five. So this stays as 1.4 meters. You see that? Since that last significant digit is already even. Let's take a look at 1.350 meters, All right? Good to two significant figures or to the tenths place. So we put the vertical dashed line between the three and the five. 
the non-significant digits again are five zero. They're exactly halfway between 1.3 and 1.4. So we don't know whether to go up or down. The last significant digit in this case is odd. Do you see that? So here it's even, here it's odd. S rules from statistics say it needs to be even. Since that was even there, it stays at the four. But here, the 1.350, that three is odd. So we need to round it up to make it even. So that one rounds up to 1.4 meters. Do you see that? So a little bit trickier. You probably didn't learn this in high school, most likely, or maybe even introductory. I don't teach this in introductory chemistry. Um, we just say if it's five or higher, you round up. But technically, you round it so that the last significant digit is even. Rock and roll gang, rounding's easy.